Uh, it is three minutes and 20 seconds uh, in on the tape. So this particular scene is, is three minutes and 20 seconds along. It was recorded at 9.03 in the AM, and the format is 4 by 3. If I do a lot of documentary work as well, I can put a note in here and put, uh, this was the Georgia Aquarium. Okay. Now, the audience will never see that, but it might be a helpful note for me. Now, 20 seconds. Let's go ahead and play that back. While you're in this menu, it, uh, it, it, you can make use of these buttons right here. I could stop the clip playback, or I could just pause it if I had to make a note and say, you know, that's a really good shot there, and that shot occurs at 6 seconds and 29 frames. So let's go ahead and, uh, and view the rest of the footage here. Beautiful footage. I feel like I'm, I'm diving. I, I, I need some of the sound effects going on. Here we come. Okay. Deep sea diver I'm not. You can tell that, those of you who dive. Now, uh, th that's a beautiful shot, but it's way too long for my, my little video, which we're going to make today, and we're going to call it our visit to the Georgia Aquarium. I want to trim that down and make that scene shorter. So, intelligently, I click on the Trim button. Now, in the trim button, it tells us the name of the scene. And again, I could play it back right here. I don't need to see the audio yet, so I'm going to turn the audio off, turn the little speaker button off. The in button, think of this as the beginning of your scene, and the out button is the ending of your scene. I'm going to trim off a little bit of the beginning simply by left-clicking on the in button and then scrolling the trackball to the right. So you scroll the trackball in the direction that you want to move the cursor, you want to move your interface, your menu. So the end point is now three seconds and nine frames in further than when we first began, and the out point, you can see, is down to 707. So this is your in mark, and this is your out mark, and this is now the total time of the new scene. The scene is now seven seconds and seven frames. So that's a good amount of time for what I'm doing here today. But it's important to note, this is what we call a non-destructive trim, which means that if I need to regain that footage, to get that footage back if I'm working on my project, I can still come back to this scene later on and regain that footage. This additional footage that we're not choosing to show to the audience is still on the hard drive, so we can come back and get that later on. Now, if we need to edit, um, particularly if you're listening to dialogue, if you're listening to narration, if, if someone's talking on screen and you need to, to trim out, maybe they had a false start, maybe uh, somebody uh, near your camera said uh, three, two, one, and then, you, you know, and then your talent started speaking on screen. You needed to cut that out. Then you would turn on the speaker, what we call the audio scrub button. And as you scroll, you'll hear the sound as well. Okay. So that's why we have that speaker button. If, if you're just trimming to, to visual content, if you're just trimming for time, and, and it's not the spoken word, most folks find um, it, it's convenient and easier for them to edit with the audio scrub or the speaker button off. Now, if I'm happy with my result, oh, oh, I forgot to show you. There the are two other little great buttons in here. I can go one frame at a time by simply clicking these, these two arrows beneath the out and the in. So it's moving one frame at a time. So for those of you who, who require and appreciate precision, know that the Casablanca is a frame accurate editor which means it gets down to the preciseness of one thirtieth of a second. Okay? The other nice button in this interface is right here. Uh, this will play back the first three seconds of your clip. This will play back the last three seconds of your, of your clip. Now, if you're new to video editing, this might seem superfluous, but, but long-time folks, and, and you will too after you work more with your Casablanca editor, it's nice to be able to just click that button and you'll see the last three seconds so you can see and hear where you've made the decision to cut to the next scene. Um, particularly when you're working in what's called long form video. If you've got a shot that's three and four and eight and 15 minutes long, it's nice not to have to watch that whole scene to see the continuity of your edit. Again, clicking on the button will just play the last three seconds of your shot. And that actually was edited uh, quite professionally. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've, we've, we've trimmed down one clip. 
And you know, that, that makes a very nice opening screen, kind of a nice wide shot for a, for a title screen. So I'm going to go ahead and take that title screen and add that up here to the storyboard. And the way that we take any scene from the scene bin and add it to the storyboard is, is not complicated at all. And that's one of the great things I appreciate about my Casablanca. It's creatively powerful, but it's simple to use. And for goodness sakes, I've got a lot of things in my life. I like the tools that simplify things and make it easy for me to be successful. So I take this new scene, and by left-clicking on the Add button, it adds it up here to the storyboard. So I've begun my, my product in earnest. Now let's go ahead and we'll pick a couple of other additional scenes here. There's this uh, a real nice shot of this jelly moving through. Uh, in fact, I'm going to take the latter part of this scene, so we'll go ahead and just trim this down. So this shot is now uh, 6 seconds and 17 frames. And at th this particular time, I'm not going to trim any out point, just the end point. So you can see you can do one or the other or both, and I go back to the Edit menu. And now I'm going to add this in series. Now, part of this is workflow. Part of this is your preference. A lot of people will go through and view their footage and trim their footage. Maybe they'll refer back to a, a shooting log or a script to their original idea before they start building your storyboard. It, it's, 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 it's a total preference. It's, you know, it's Coke versus Pepsi. Although there is some merit if you're certainly doing film type work or commercial type work, it's probably very appropriate to go through and look at all your raw footage and trim it out and do what some people call a paper edit, where you organize all your shots prior to building them. But the beauty of having a nonlinear digital video editor like the Casablanca, there's a lot of flexibility, and it gives me the creative freedom to go back and forth and make changes and adjustments as we're going along. So I've, what I'm going to do is, because I've got a lot of scenes here, and, and I really want to get through the fine points today and, and share with you some of the other great features in the Casablanca Smart Edit interface, I'm going to go ahead and add my, add, add my scenes as we're building them. So again, I've, I've, I've trimmed this jelly shot down to, uh, well, well, here it is, the 6 seconds and 17 frames, and I want that to come next, to come behind the first scene. So I click on the Add button, and there's a request menu. It says, where would you like to put this chat? Would you like to put it in front of the scene that's already up there, or do you want to put it behind the scene, or is this not really what you wanted to do? Do you want to cancel that? Well, in fact, I do want it to go behind or after the first scene, so I left-click on behind, and there we go. And then we're going to come over here, and here's this really interesting shot. It looks like a yellow tang. In fact, it is. Got a nice close-up of this yellow tang for, uh, let's go ahead. It starts to zoom out or pull out, and another fish just comes in the shot. Couldn't let that fish have all the glory itself. So let's go ahead and take this at 423. And here's one of those times when I might want to move the menu up and down because I want to see the eyes and the face of the fish. And you can see this other fish coming in screen left. So let's get back just till we, oh, it's there the whole time. It's watching us. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to about 425 here. And I left click on the edit button to go back to the edit menu, and we add this next. Now you might be wondering if you're new to Casablanca, wait a minute, why didn't give me that menu? It will only bring up the menu in front or behind with the first scene. After you've begun building your scene, it's going to always add next. Here's a neat shot of a seahorse, and that's 624. That whole thing is, is not too long. It's perfect length for what I'm doing here, so we'll go ahead and take the whole 627, and I'm going to add that next. And I've got a shot, what have we got here? It looks like a, uh, okay. We're moving in on this tiny, I think that's a shrimp, though I'm not certain. And uh, that's a nice shot, but it, it, let's say it doesn't really fit my script for what I want to do right now. Uh, oh, here's a great shot of, of people actually coming through the tube. Um, but today I want to just focus on the, on the fish themselves. So let's go with these, uh, they look like striped tang. If it's not true, it sounds good, doesn't it? I'll go ahead and make up my fish names here. Uh, and I'll go ahead and add that after the seahorse. But here's a, here's a question that is asked often as well. Let's say you wanted this seahorse to be before or in front of the tang. How do you move them around? There's actually a very easy method. By highlighting the clip or the scene that you want to move in the storyboard, you click on the Remove button. And watch what happens down below when I do this. 
smart at it. 